Honey Heart C. Hello, mini fans. Well, thank you for joining me today. Today, we're going to be painting a briar model. So I thought I would turn on the camera and have you guys join me as I paint this mare right here. She's been primed already, but I'm still going to go over her with some of this acrylic paint. Now, I'm going to paint her into a pinto. So whenever I do my horses, I like to use an off-white color for the white part of the pinto. So this is an oyster white acrylic paint. Give it a shake. Open it up and I'm just going to paint the whole entire model with this off-white paint. You can see the color right there going on her and I'm gonna keep it nice and smooth to kind of help get rid of some of those bubbles. Do, 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 do. Now I'm probably gonna be painting her face brown so I'll leave that part unpainted. This is just the parts where I think I'm gonna be putting her white patterns on her pinto coat. The whole point of the first coat is to keep it very, very smooth. Now is the fun part. Now is the time to actually start mapping out exactly how I want her to look. I'm gonna make her into a pinto and I'm gonna be using some of this paint, just regular folk art acrylic paint. This is in cinnamon. Now this paint that I've had, I've had this for a very, very, very long time. So it kind of needs to be mixed up a little. It doesn't totally look right. So I'm just gonna take a little bit on my brush and a little bit on a piece of some wax paper and just kind of mix it up just so it kind of gets mixed in a little bit. Some of this acrylic paint I've had for so long. Woo! Take this out. It just gets kind of oily and clumpy bumpy sometimes, but I'm just gonna use it anyways. Just add a little bit of some water to it, kind of smooth it out, kind of check the consistency and it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go with this color. So I'm adding lots and lots and lots of water to my brush. I want this to be super duper smooth. Cause as you guys have heard me say over and over and over and over and over, I love to do really, really thin coats, multiple thin coats instead of one big thick coat because then it's not bumpy. Okay, and now I just have to decide where exactly I want all of her patterns. So I've already determined that I do want her face to be brown. So I am going to take my paint and yep, here we go. I am just going to paint her face this brown color. Do, 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 do. I wanna go over her eye. Then all of this is going to be brown, including her ear. And so I'm just gonna start creating her pattern. Maybe just kind of going down her neck a little bit. Just whatever, I'm just kind of making it up as I'm going along. I'm gonna go over to the other side of her here and I'm gonna paint this side of her face. Just have fun putting the pattern on the horse. All right, so after that first coat, now I'm just gonna go in with a second coat of paint. So same thing, add some water to it and let's get painting. And each coat that I do, it will get stronger and stronger and stronger with color. I am loving the color so much on this mare. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna clean up some of her little markings that she has by going back in with my off-white color. So I'm just gonna clean up any areas with a very, very watered down brush. Just kind of clean it up here. So I'm just gonna go around all of her markings and just clean, clean, clean. And now's a good time too. If I wanted to change any of the pattern shape, I can but I am liking it exactly how she is. Just the whole point is I wanna keep this paint nice and smooth, so I don't want it to be too heavy and strong. So there we go, nice and smooth. Just clean it on up. Oop, there's an area I need to touch up. There we go. Just make it disappear. But I wanna make sure I go back with a watered down brush now and just kinda of soften up these little paint marks that I just did. There we go. Just clean up the lines just a little bit. Just smooth that paint out, especially on the white. You can really see paint brush strokes, so really smooth it out. Looks like the brush kind of got away from me here, so I'm just gonna reapply this marking right back in. There we go. Soften it up. Lots of areas to touch up right here in this little smaller area. Now this is just to kind of give it a cleaner look for the initial phase here. And then I'm gonna go back in and do some mapping. So I'm gonna go back later and do that once these all dry. And since I have my off white paint out, I'm just kind of going to extend the white markings on her face since I want it to include her chin. So I'm going to move it down just a little bit. 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do that mapping design around each one of her little patch marks. So I'm gonna take my off-white, the same color that I painted her body, and really, really, really water this paint down. So I want it to be nice and milky. Here we go. So I want to now trace around each one of the markings going into the actual color, and that way it kind of looks like a little bit of the mapping that they have on Pinto horses. So I'm just gonna go around each marking. Do, 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 do. With a very, very, very watered down off white. Just trace around each one. See, and look at how that kind of looks. Now it looks like she actually has mapping around each one of her little markings. The trick is, is just still making sure that that paint is just constantly watered down. You do not want it to be too thick or else it will cover up some of the brown. And if it's too watery, then you won't even really notice it. So that looks really perfect. Round and around and around. It's kind of fun. You're actually just tracing around exactly where you just painted. So it's like easy painting. Only trick is, is just keeping it that right consistency. Now there's no wrong way to paint a model. Everybody has their own technique. This is just a technique that I am using for today. But you can do whatever works best for you. Sometimes it helps if you paint a really thin brown coat around the edge going on the outside to also create the mapping. But today I'm just gonna do the white coat. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now that I have the mapping in the coat pattern all done, I'm gonna start working on her mane and tail. So she has a ton of hair, as you can see on this beautiful, beautiful mare. So what I wanna do is I actually want to give her some white hair to match her body color, and then I also wanna give her some dark brown hair for the pieces of hair that are actually in this darker area here on her skin. I'm gonna make sure I have her hair completely colored in this gorgeous, gorgeous off-white color. You can see I have a few little areas I have to touch up here. So I'm just gonna carefully, carefully go in with my brush and touch up these areas that should actually be white. Here we go. Just get as close as I can to her body color there. Oop, yep, I got a lot of little touch-ups to do right here as well. Now I'm not gonna worry too much about this area because that part of her mane is gonna be dark. I'm just gonna make sure I have what I want covered is covered. Now for this part of her mane, I'm gonna lighten it up just a little bit, but I wanna keep it as close to her coat color as I can. So I'm gonna go in with my coat color. Do, 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 do. And I'm gonna mix it a little bit with this classic caramel color. Just take a little bit of some paint here and mix these two colors together, adding in some water just to kind of lighten it up. Put it on my brush and start painting. Do, 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 do. I love this mold so much. I love how her hair is just so wild and so long. And it's just totally, totally just right in her face. Yeah, I'm loving this light, light, light mane. I think it's adding some really cool dimension to her. I wanna get the front piece here. It's blowing right in front of her face. There we go. What a beauty. Now I wanna take my time as I go close to her face here because this part on her blaze, it's not supposed to have any paint. So I don't wanna go back and fix it if I don't have to. So I'm just gonna take my time. There's no need to rush in painting. There we go. Just get as close to her face as I can. Careful, careful. I'm just really letting that edge of the brush do the gliding. There we go. Now on this side of her, I wanna be more selective of where I'm actually painting my color because she's only gonna have brown hair at the top part of her here. So the way it flows and goes, it's not gonna go all the way into her mane. It's only gonna go just a little bit. So I wanna be very, very picky which ones I am going to be painting. And again, I wanna take my time going down as close to her body as I can without getting any paint on it. And I'm just gonna let this mane go wild. So this one kind of dips down into here, maybe a little bit here. And I'm just gonna keep painting coat after coat until the color goes on nice and strong. And I'm gonna start weaving some of the hairs in and out of the other parts of her mane, like the white color. But I'm not gonna worry about it too much because I'm gonna go back in with a little bit more details. I just wanna make sure I get the color nice and strong strong on her. She is turning out so, so, so beautiful. So I'm gonna go in with my brush and I'm just gonna kinda, just kinda clean up some of these little finer hair pieces. Just totally, totally have fun with it. If you are painting your own briars, just go crazy. I mean, I could have given this girl a rainbow mane and tail, whatever. You can do whatever you want. So whatever you think looks right. So I'm just kinda putting these little hair strands on and just kinda cleaning them up a little bit, make it look like 
get her hair just kind of mixed right in here with the other pieces because her hair is so long and so super duper flowy. I think this is the thickest mane I've ever seen on a briar. Definitely the ones in my collection for sure. Now that I've given so much attention to her mane, it's time to focus on her tail because I have left her tail unpainted because this is where I've been holding her. So of course I'm going to go in with my creamy off-white color and paint her tail to match the rest of her. Paint, paint, paint. Keeping that paint nice and smooth. There we go. Woo, she is a beauty. You can really appreciate the details of each model as you start painting them. Paint this whole side. There we go. Now she looks really pretty the way she is with her white tail and her white little feathers, but I'm gonna add just a little touch of realism because I usually see that horses have long manes and tails and feathers. Sometimes there's a touch of yellow that they have in their feathers and at the tip of their tail. So I'm gonna take my off-white color and I'm gonna use a touch, just a teeny, weeny tiny little touch of yellow. So there's like barely any on my brush and I'm going to mix it into my paint. And now only at the tip, I'm gonna add this off-white yellowy color. There we go. And it kind of just gives it a little bit of some dimension. So it's barely even noticeable, but your eye will know it's there. I'm gonna paint that just at the tip. And it kind of gives her tail a nice little ombre kind of color going on. So paint that right in. See, so take a look at her tail now. Doesn't it look like she has a lot more dimension in her tail? And I'm gonna do the same thing to the bottom of her little feathers here. Same thing, just add just a tiny little touch of color. Just add it right in there. That's where she would be stepping on the ground and in the dirt. So the feathers may just kind of get a little bit darker. And I'll do the same thing with just the little tips of her mane. Okay, she's looking really, really good. You know, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more dimension into her mane, just a little bit more. So I'm actually gonna go in with a lighter color of brown mixed in with some body color. And I'm just gonna go in and just do just a few little tiny color swirlies, just to kind of also give this a little bit more dimension. As as well, because I want it to have a lot of like movement and color. So a little bit of just some extra color highlights just kind of thrown in here. Now we're gonna work on her face and I think she would look really cute if she had some little kissy marks, kind of like how this horse has, kind of like a little bit of some gray muzzles and then a little tiny little gray markings on the horse as well. So I'm gonna go in with some gray acrylic paint. Do, 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 do. Open it. Now I'm gonna use just a teeny bit on my brush. Tiny, teeny, 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 weeny. And I'm gonna put some on my paper here and just kind of wipe it off and add a whole bunch of water to it because I really want it to be watered down. And then sometimes I go back in and add even more paint. And then apply a little bit of some gray to her muzzle, just a little bit, a little bit. And it can go into the brown as well. So she's got a little kissy mark right here. Here. We'll do a couple little spots on her lippies. And of course, I can't forget the other side. So a little bit of some graying on her muzzle. And maybe a little bit down her chin, just a little bit. So after applying a second coat, I'm just gonna go in now with my white color and I'm just gonna do a little wash right over all of this color just to soften it up a little bit. There we go. So she has really, really soft markings. Woo, I'm gonna love this mare. Now I'm gonna do another coat on her muzzle as well. But this time I'm gonna start adding some pink in so her muzzle looks nice and healthy. So I'm gonna use this touch of pink, take some of my white, and I really am just gonna take a touch of pink and mix it on in. Add some water to my brush, soften it up, maybe a little bit more white in there. Looks pretty good. Now I'm just gonna add in the pink now to her muzzle. Really, really soft and light. There we go. Look at that super duper sweet little muzzle. And then now I'm gonna take my very, very white watered down pink and I'm just gonna add a little bit here to her stomach area. Now in my little pink mixture, I'm gonna add in an even softer light brown, just a little tiny touch of it. And this is gonna be my hoof color. So on each one of her hooves, I'm just going to carefully, carefully paint on love color. And of course I can paint underneath as well. And really use the edge of the brush to help do that gliding and just really shape the hoof with the color. 
Now we're gonna paint this beauty's eyes. So I'm actually gonna be painting with a toothpick. So I like to actually break it off a little bit on the tip. That way it's not quite as pointy. I'm gonna dip my toothpick in some black paint. Now she only has one eye showing, so that makes it a lot easier to paint her eye. So I'm just going to take my black paint and paint her eye. Now I'm gonna go in with some white acrylic paint on my pointier side. Go in and add just a little bit of some white here to the corner of her eye. Now I can leave her eye just like that or I can go in with some darker brown on my toothpick and I can add a little tiny speck of brown in her eye. I love doing tri-colored eyes so I usually try to do them. So there we go, add that in like that. Can go in and do a little dot of black just like that. So now she kind of has like more of a realistic horse eye. Now the last thing to do is seal in that coat color. So I'm gonna be using this DuraClear matte varnish. Give this stuff a really, really good shake. Boop, boop, boop. And I'm gonna dip my brush in, a really, really fluffy, fluffy brush. Dip it in some water. And I'm just going to start painting this all over my horse. And this is what's gonna protect the coat forever and ever and ever and ever. And it won't make the paint as fragile. So it will be totally resistant to chipping and cracking and scrapes and scratches and all that fun stuff. Especially with me, cause you guys know I like to play with my models. All right, so let's go on over to my briar shelf and oh, here we have my Emma's and look at how beautiful she turned out. So I can take her out and look at how cute. Okay, seriously, I think she turned out absolutely perfectly. She's so gorgeous. I did go in and gloss her nostrils a little bit and her eye to make it just a little bit more realistic. So I think she just is just so, so, so gorgeous. I'm really happy with how she turned out. Oh, I totally love her. So here is the brand new horse added to my collection. I'll just put her right back in here with the rest of them, just like that. <gasps> Ooh, where she can just be gorgeous and gorgeous. Look at that mane. See, whenever you lighten up her mane, you can really see the color. You can barely tell on Emma here just how long and full her mane is, but look at that. You can totally tell. So awesome, so awesome. All right, Manny fans, I hope you enjoyed this customization of this traditional model. Remember, if you are gonna be customizing, always have fun painting. Don't forget to subscribe for more Briar Fun videos, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye, Manny!